Hey everyone, how's it going? End of the day. Super busy today. I stopped here to eat at a restaurant. I really like, I want to record a video here for you guys first because this week, I don't know where people got this from, but wow, let me turn on the car here. Otherwise I'm going to cook because many people ask me about the impact uh, of a possible electoral decision this year between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, how this could impact procedural or immigration issues. And then uh, we start doing a series of calculations and we see that it doesn't make much sense. I wanna talk about this with you all here now because I don't know who said this, where these people saw this, because I really received a lot of questions about it. I don't know where they watched it, what video they saw, or from whom they saw it, but I don't think it's cool, and it's nothing personal, because I really don't know where they got this from, but those who engage in this kind of fear-mongering on the eve of an election, saying, no, now is your chance. Either you apply now, or you'll lose your chance, because now, that doesn't exist, okay? It doesn't exist because, well, if you remember, let's imagine, if things, if Kamala Harris wins, and if she appoints Shapiro now, she has a great, great chance. It greatly increases her chances of winning. If things continue uh, as they are, they will remain the same. Today we have a, a very large guard delay within immigration, and we are outside the standard, but I don't think it will get worse than this. The worst that can happen is I uh, an increase in the delay. If Donald Trump comes in, we will go back to the time when he was president, what, what was the only thing he did regarding immigration processes, specifically immigrant processes. And remember, for non-immigrants, it works a bit differently. It's easier for him to make a quick decision there, but the immigration processes will require a series of internal approvals and Congress can block them. It's not as simple as people imagine. This is also due to quota issues and everything else. Remember that even during the chaotic times when Donald Trump was hitting hard on the immigration issue, he didn't even come close to deporting as many people as Obama did. He placed a ban on L1, H, M, and J visas. The L1 and the H were immediately challenged by the big techs who managed to eliminate them in court and overturned the decision. The M and the J, well, the M is the P water. Honestly, it's P water. I've seen M twice in my life in 22 years of career. Nobody asked for M, they asked for F. Nobody asked for M. And the J visa, I agree with Donald Trump, because the J visa takes away many opportunities from American apprentices to project themselves in the market, to have their first experience, to get a first job, and things like that. Ah, but if we don't have the international person coming to do this exchange through the J, there won't be someone to fill that specific position. That's also true. So we need to be more balanced on this point. So if you look, first, it's important for us to understand one thing. Uh, the United States and Brazil are completely different. Culturally and politically, the change of a president in Brazil impacts much more than the change of a president in the United States, especially in terms of the economy. I've seen uh, several presidents here. I've seen four different presidents. And I can tell you that the changes that's in the real economy were not significant or something that you would say, wow, it broke the economy. It wasn't, uh, so uh, we have different realities. In Brazil, when we change a president, we break a lot of things. Here, the economy keeps going. And that's why the economy, in a way, keeps going here, because uh, each state has a very large power to legislate and control its territorial part there. Very large, much larger wag than sometimes. Uh, even some countries have and also because many American states are even larger than many countries. So we have to consider that as well. What do we notice here? You see a lot of people leaving California, a lot of people leaving New York. These are democratic states. And don't imagine that a Democrat here is the same as the Brazilian left. 
there is no left here. Here there is uh, the center left, the left more or less. There's no Venezuela, Lula, uh, or Cuba here. That doesn't exist here. When they talk about the American left, it's the Brazilian center left. Let's give. An example here, he is a moderate capitalist, not a radical capitalist, nor a more centrist capitalist. He is a moderate capitalist. Anything here is going to be capitalist. So this is something important for you to understand. And many people, when they are in a more democratic state, don't need to move to another country. They just move to another state because the other state will already have much more. Deeply rooted right-wing policies than the previous one. And I say this and joke about it with all my friends. I don't care. I don't believe in Donald Trump and I don't believe in Kamala Harris. Neither of them, honestly, I don't believe it to me. They're all the same. Besides, if you do some research, just research, Donald Trump was the biggest financier of Kamala Harris's campaign his entire life until 2020. Look it up and see for yourselves. And then I think they're all cut from the same cloth. My president is Greg Abbott. That's my president, who is the governor here in Texas. This guy, uh, I raised the flag for him. I wear the t-shirt. I'm a fan of this guy. I'm truly a fan of this guy. But the rest doesn't impact much, especially on the issue of immigration. So all this talk we hear from people saying, oh no, because it will change. And if you don't do your process now and pay now, you'll miss the opportunity of your life. Folks, that's just talk, which in my opinion is neither ethical nor true. And it is not even consistent with the principle that I believe a professional should have okay, so I don't think it's something you should worry about. Of course, everyone wants to make money, obviously, right? Everyone needs to, has bills to pay, has invoices to pay, and each person acts in their own way to convince others to spend their money at that particular moment. But I don't think this is uh, something that should be put at stake, because when you talk about moving to another country, there are many other things involved that are very important. And sometimes it might not be the best time for that family. And I'm not talking about the best financial moment. I'm talking about the best overall moment. I always tell you here, always talk as a couple, always align this, be in a good, cool, light, emotional vibe, because otherwise you will constantly clash for not having matured that situation. And the person who is going to handle your process needs to have the maturity to sometimes say, hey, calm down, relax, you're too hyped. And that's not good for your process. And then people gather, observe, calm down, and the process moves forward. Cool, all right, think about it. Don't worry because I don't think that. The change of any president, whether it's a change or continuation, whatever it is, I don't think it's something that will impact any type of process, just as it hasn't impacted in the past, right? What might eventually happen is some kind of amnesty that they are proposing now, and maybe that's a possibility. This is especially a possibility if Kamala Harris comes into office. I don't think this is the best moment of maturity for the country, because we have a lot of people who have just come in and are acting shamefully. And I don't think that's fair to those who were already here before. I do think we will see a closing of the borders, but this is legal for immigration. I think we are going to have to get things in order because unfortunately, USIS has been lacking a series of resources that I believe should have been allocated there and need to be allocated there, but otherwise I don't think so. In terms of visas, structure, or tightening of regulations, I don't believe it. All right, best regards, God bless, thank you.